Well, hello guys. This is the Venomax man here. Uh, with a really cool, probably one of the best Sanyo made Betamax VCRs. Well, actually it's beta. The, the format is actually just beta. But Betamax was Sony's trademark name. Um, this is actually called the Beta Chord. So you, can, you can see the, the B Chord is what they call it. Yeah, it just says B Chord. But it's Beta Chord. This is a Sanyo VTC 9100A. And we're not going to work on it yet. We will. Later, we will work on it. Right now, we're just taking a look at it. Now, when I first got it, I was trying to play a tape. And I was getting audio, but no video. So I cleaned the heads. And I still wasn't getting a new video. And after cleaning it a dozen more times, finally got the heads to clear. The heads were clogged severely. I thought for a minute I was scared because I thought, oh crap, are the video heads shot? Because it was just a like a, a gray, snowy picture. But then I thought, nah, it may not be bad heads, but. So the belts are worn. It will, it will play a tape. Um, the heads are, pr the, I mean not the heads, but the belts. The belts are pretty worn. So I have to help the machine load the tape so we're gonna take the cover off I've already got the screws out and everything and I've already had the cover off but I wanted to put the cover on for you know for the camera this is something that my childhood I remember in my childhood we had these knobs these are the old analog tuners. And you could go, um, if you went to, you turn your VHF knob until it goes to the U. So it's switching from VHF to UHF. So unless this is tuned to U, this turns on. And then you can select your channels. And you can do your, your fine tuning. These are your tuning knobs. This is the stuff that I grew up with. I grew up with, with all this. So this is very nostalgic for me. Because I remember growing up in the 80s and the 90s. And... My parents had an old TV from the 60s because we couldn't afford a new TV, right? So my dad had an old one. You know, he had bought a used one. And uh, I think there was one that he, he bought and he fixed because he, he used to work on electronics. Back in the 70s, and I, I miss my dad a lot. He's no longer with me, but he's no longer, you know, on the earth with me. But he's inside here, inside my heart. You know, and he's with God now, so. Anyway, but I remember these old things, and uh, this thing weighs about 45 50 pounds so 
I know what you guys are wanting to see. Let's see if we can get a picture out of this thing. Now I will say that the, the picture quality is, is quite poor. Um, which we can correct that. This thing is, what, like, gosh, this thing's 40 plus years old because I believe this model came out in 1979. So this, this thing is, is older than I am. Um, because I was born in, uh, 85, or no, 86. So I was born in 1986, and this was, this was made in 1979, so, it's what, seven years before I was born. But, let's get a, take a look at it. Me and the Betamax kitty here, we're going to, um, enjoy work, using and working on this thing. Baby girl. Yeah. I love my kitty. So let's uh, get this top off and we'll show you what it looks like when it's loading a, a cassette. Now I had a, a friend of mine, Anthony, a few months ago he said to me that he would like to see uh, me repair a vintage machine with the piano keys, well, he's going to get his wish because we are going to work on this. So we have to help it load. Now unlike, unlike most of the Sanyos from the 1980s, they didn't load until you hit play. But on the older um, Sanyos, the original Sanyo machines, they were a lot like the Sony's and they loaded right away. Okay, now we'll hit play. And uh, let's see if we still got a picture or not. Yep, we got a picture. And it's a very bad picture. Very bad picture. Look at all those lines and stuff in there. This thing looks so terrible. But it's also a very old tape, so you gotta keep that in mind too. You know, the love bug is, this is actually, what is it called? The love bug? Yeah. This is the love bug movie. Tracking doesn't seem to do a whole lot, actually. But the quality is poor. Very poor. Not, uh, not up to the normal standards of uh, a machine this old. So, um, for beta, it's not up to the I would not call that call that beta standards right there. That picture is pretty bad. So we are going to fix that problem. Now we've got um we've got a motor here. This motor actually turns the head drum and if we stop it and oh it went into shutdown mode but if we stop the picture will actually stop 
because the heads are being controlled by the motor. So that one motor controls the heads. And I believe it also controls the capstan. And it has uh, several belts in it. This particular machine uses belts and pulleys and basically what that system does is a clutch system in order to slow down the capstan or to have the drum motor turning at a proper speed these pulleys and clutches that would uh, do the control the speeds but it is quite an amazing machine so let me show you what this thing does when it's loading and unloading so we have to hit stop and then we can hit eject it ejects just fine when it's loading is when it's having difficulty so now it's loaded we can hit the play button so we'll show you the see if it'll this does not have picture search this machine is old enough to where picture search did not exist so just so you guys know, so you aren't able to fast forward on the picture when it's playing. You can only do it with, see the keys lock out. It locks out. So you have to hit stop and then you, the fast forward is fine. See what we want. Yeah, rewind is really not doing anything. But it will fast forward. So this has got belts and tires that are going to need to be replaced. Now, I've ordered a set of belts. Um... I was trying to order belts from Studio Sound Electronics. I ordered some belts from them about two, a week ago, maybe two weeks ago. And when I go back to go to that website, I had it saved in my favorites. And it says this web page cannot be found. So I don't know if they're having problems with their web page or if they're gone no longer in business I'm thinking maybe they're no longer in business because none of their websites are working Studio Sound Electronics is who I got all my belts for I got all my belts from them to fix the Sanyos and now that I can't get from them there's another electronics company called Norvac Electronics. They may have it. They may not. I ordered the tires from them. And, um... They, they stopped selling the tires because they discontinued them. So, basically, I had to order a um, generic set of tires I actually bought a, a VCR idler tire um, kit and it came with a bunch of different sized um, tires clutch tires and so that's that's why I've been able to fix my to fix some of these Sanyo beta cords and sell them yes i sell these things so yes i will repair 
customers machines I buy machines to repair and sell I repair customers machines I've had a few people come to me and and they brought me a, a one guy brought me like four or five beta machines and uh, I was able to fix all of them except for one because it just wasn't uh, fixable because you couldn't couldn't get the part and it was it was a model that that I'm not gonna pay you know two three hundred dollars for one just to buy one part anyway so I fixed four out of five that he sent me another guy sent me two machines um, the other day somebody brought me one and I got it going for him and I shipped that one out just look at the, the cool piano keys look at that so it'll play just fine you know so it did plays and this is going to be a machine that you know I'm going to be messing with over the weekend you know um I'm drinking some Mountain Dew so you know basically it'll need not only belts uh, it'll need tires it's definitely gonna need capacitors for sure because uh, the video quality is poor the audio quality is poor um, I'll go into the uh, head amplifier and recap that we'll recap the audio board we might go I might go as far as replacing every capacitor in this thing I might just do a full restoration now a full resto requires not only capacitors but other components such as um, transistors resistors all those other components that you know will need to be replaced it was damaged a little bit in shipping it wasn't uh, packed at all for shipping it actually you can see here that there's a uh, the bottom has came out from the the bottom here it's coming out but um probably because it's got a missing screw because somebody's been into this machine so we can go ahead and stop it and we'll let you see the eject mechanism that is the coolest thing ever there we go Isn't that a great mechanism? It really is kind of cool. It's uh, basically the heads are basically the same. It looks very, very similar to the Sony uh, SL7200 and the uh, 8200 and the 8600. <clears throat> Now, if we take the uh, top off of off of this, we might be able to get get down in there. But we have to remove this 
um, little dust shield. Once we remove the dust shield, it'll expose the idler tires. So what I'm going to do is like take the cassette housing out. So we got to take the cassette housing completely out so that I can get to all the tires. And there's going to be belts that are going to be, you know, bad, obviously. And those belts are going to be on the bottom side. There's a lot of circuitry in this thing. These had a lot of electronics in them. They, they used way more electronics in these old ones than they did in the ones from the 80s. And this thing is old enough to where it needs new components installed capacitors for sure and this thing is not light at all it is a beast it is a monster of a machine I'm just turning it here because I want to take a look at some things but there's your big transformer your linear power supply and the big old transformer and we've got a, a circuit board here and the circuit board is actually made to um, lift up they made these things serviceable these things were made to service so I'm not sure um, what board this is this looks like it could be maybe the uh, preamp but there's uh, here's some audio now it might be an audio board might be an audio board because these are audio um cables so but this this might be the audio board itself but we're gonna do a lot of like uh repairing look look at the old mechanical tuner this this tuner is completely mechanical it's completely mechanical I love these old tuners, like I said, I mean, I grew up, I grew up with this stuff, you know, and it's a nostalgia thing for me, you know, because, I, yes, I realized that I was born in 86, so I realized that, yes, I don't, I don't remember too much about the 80s, um, because I was so little, but I do remember the 80s you know not 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 very well because you know I was born in 86 so I was only alive for what four years in the 80s but the 90s I remember them real well and you got you got these kids that are saying like oh yeah I'm a 90s kid well not really because you were born in like 1999 or something like that. I was like, no, you're not. You're not a 90s kid. You know, you're just a damn millennial. Anyway, um, so, you know, this has got a lot of circuitry. So, you know, I'd like to see, I'd like to see where the uh, head amp is, because I, I don't know where the head amp is on this machine. And, uh, actually, one of the ways that you can, so if you don't know where the head amp is, follow the, the wires. So, the wires that are connected to the video head, uh, which, on the bottom here, 
so you you where the wires connect to so coming from the video head going to whatever circuit board it goes to the wires go to that's where your head amp is so if you don't know that's how you can get to it and that's how you know where it is look at this big motor here look at this this is a big freaking motor and as you can see it's turning the turns the head drum so I had a clogged head now replacing heads on this model requires special equipment and if you don't have that equipment and you don't have so that equipment without it you can't change the heads because if you do and you don't have the equipment then you're screwed because you'll never get the alignment right you'll never get the heads right and you'll never get anywhere so you just have to have an eccentricity gauge for that now um see here's some more uh components here and uh this has got yeah so this board here's a board here and it probably it probably pops up pops up out of the way might be able to lift it up I don't know but uh, maybe the uh, maybe the head amp is on this board over here maybe but we're gonna need a lot of a lot of stuff done to it but it's gonna need uh, belts tires and capacitors so that's what this beast is gonna require in order for me to get this thing up and running without you know that you know without trouble I don't want to be uh, if I decide to sell this I want to make sure that the seller is going to be 100% happy with it and I want to make sure that it's going to last him for a long time and I call it preventive maintenance where you're doing things to the machine to prevent it from having an issue later on down the road so well, the reason I do that is because I warranty my stuff for 30 days and sometimes I'll warranty it for longer but most of the time I warranty them for 30 days and I guarantee them for 30 days so I want to make sure that they not only they continue working the 30 days but hopefully continue working for the next you know few years you know if I put all the, if I was to restore this thing and replace every single component this thing will go 20 plus years providing that the providing the heads don't go bad on them if your heads are good then the rest of it is a piece of cake so just look at all the cool circuitry and just all the neat stuff and there's more circuitry underneath so we're not even seeing most of the circuitry most of the circuitry is in the back and on the bottom so I just thought you guys would like to take a look at this beast So, I hopefully, hopefully you guys have enjoyed 
taking a, a quick look at this thing and um, we will be doing a repair on this machine so you know what I might do let's put in let's put in a time period correct jaws This is a, a movie Jaws, uh, which was 1977, I believe. Ooh, it's screwing up the heads. All the tape is, uh, chewed. That's what happened. The tape got chewed on it. Yeah. And the heads are clogged. Yep. Oh, I just clogged my heads. Yep. There we go. It cleared up. So, it's a very old tape. You know, this is like uh, one of the original releases. This is an 80, early 80s release on video. But uh, anyway, so I thought you guys would enjoy taking a quick look at this beautiful piece of history. I don't know if there's, you know, hopefully there's no spiders or anything that's uh, in this thing, but you never know. It looks like it's been sitting in somebody's storage for quite some time. There's a, this uh, panel is bowed, so I'm not sure what's going on with that panel, but we can straighten that panel up. This ain't wood. It looks like wood and it feels like wood, but it's actually plastic. But it feels like wood. It really does. It's a simulated wood cabinet. It says right here, beta cord video cassette recorder. And there's our counter. So, anyway, um, I just wanted to give you guys a quick little video, quick look, and, uh, show you kind of the workings and in and outs of this beautiful piece of machinery that we're going to work on, and we'll get, we'll get it going, and we'll get working on it. So, anyway, uh, see you guys later. Bye-bye.